Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Yes, it's ADSR. Yes, it is a Wednesday. My name is Paul Nolan, and I am back, back in the hallowed halls of ADSR to bring you another live stream of goodness. And tonight, the subject is a very, very meaty one indeed. We're going to do Artoria Augmented Collection which is on sale at the minute. There's a 30% off discount on all four of these tremendous plugins. And they are as follows. There are augmented voices, there's augmented brass, there's augmented pianos and augmented strings as well. Um, What I thought we could do, which we'll get into any second now, is we'll actually make a trailer cue that you would hear at the cinema before, you know, going to see your favorite movie and basically get into that world of trailer music. I'm mostly known on this channel and for my educational platform, MYT, and the people who I've worked with in the past, including the likes of Sasha, for example, in the electronic music world, progressive house, melodic techno, organic house, that kind of thing. But I've also done quite a lot of work in the film industry as well. And I've worked with some of the big hitters in Hollywood, including the likes of Junkie XL, and a guy called Jeff Rona, who is a legend in the video game and documentary space. So in terms of, you know, my chops, as it were, as a composer, you're going to see that other side of it right now. So before we get started, please do us a lovely service of liking this video, sharing it with your music production nerd friends, and also subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps us do more of this amazing content. It grows the channel, means we can bring great offers to you, and also obviously keep it locked on adsrsounds.com. Everything you need there, all of your learning, sample packs, synth presets, you name it, all there for you, as well as obviously amazing plug-in deals. If you've got any questions, drop them in the chat. I'm, I'm monitoring YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook all at the same time. I've got my beady little eye on all of it, and it is going to be a very interesting time. So we'll jump straight in, and we shall take a look. And tonight, we're actually going to be working in Logic, because I actually prefer to write my film and orchestral stuff in logic it just makes a bit more sense to me i find the workflow much more you know kind of just just great for that and what we'll do is we'll actually play it through it's about a minute long but i'll play the whole thing through and everything that you hear in here apart from the drums is completely done using the augmented collection in the artoria package so let's have a little listen and we will uh, go on the other side here we go So far I got, 
I set myself a little challenge because I awoke to an email from the ADSR crew this morning saying, yeah, we're going to do it tonight. So I was like, okay. So before I even ate my breakfast, I was at the computer this morning and I decided to set myself a little challenge of what if I could get a trailer queue ready for tonight's stream? Like, let's see how far I can get. And the good news is I got relatively far. So the cool thing here is, like I say, the drums are just samples that I've got that I use for trailer work just to give it that boom, woo, you know, all that stuff. Again, I also teach in sound effects, so, you know, whoops, uh, sorry, <laughs> basically. And the great thing is, like I say, you know, normally I'm using all these different orchestral layers and I'm using all these different synth layers and it's all getting very complicated. And, you know, to be quite honest with you, the the track count by this stage of a, of a trailer queue is normally about double what I've got right now because I'm doing all these layers separately, you know, and this is where like the Artoria Augmented Collection is just absolutely wild in terms of how good it is. And I'll give you the, an insight into this straight away. So like I say, everything apart from the hits and the, you know, the, the drum stuff and, you know, little booms and subs and stuff is all Artoria. So we'll play this little intro off and we'll actually bring it up. Now, this is also the, the power of, of the augmented collection. This is literally the preset that you open the plug into. And actually, I'm going to be honest, there's a couple of them in this session because they just start right out of the box sounding absolutely wild and so tweakable, so simple. But then if you want to get into the depth, oh, just absolutely everything's there for you if you're a sound design nerd like me. So what I've got here is the controls. Now, for those of you who might be not so, you know, aware of how the Augmented Collection works, you've basically got two sides to the story. You've got one that's more natural, more acoustic, if you will. In this case, it's various string ensembles, violins, cellos, violas, basses, that kind of thing. And then a heavily synthesized synthetic side on the other, A and B, right? And you can kind of see it in the way that the plugin works. So what I've got here is this morph control and I can kind of move this from one side to the other. So if we listen to this for a second, you'll get exactly what I mean. Right. So you've got this really aggressive, very cinematic, you hear this in a lot of films, right? That's just an F held note straight out the gate because if we go into the advanced mode, you can see we've got access to arpeggiators and everything else, which actually this is not particularly operational at the moment. So it'll be down to the modulation and again, the function controls and stuff like that as well. I like the fact that the function controls like a little mushroom there, good little in joke there. And from there, you've got this ability to blend these layers. So I've actually turned layer A off entirely here because I wanted this wavetable synth sound. So this is how powerful it is. For those of you who know Artorias stuff really well, this layer B here all of a sudden starts to look a little bit more like pigments. And pigments is quite honestly one of my favorite synths. I'll be completely honest with you. There are some very, very expensive, very, very well-known plugins from other developers that we shall not mention that I took out small loans to get and that they kind of just sat on my hard drive gathered in dust because of the likes of pigments and the augmented strings is starting to do that to other forms of my collection so thanks Artoria for you know <laughs> letting me waste all of that money and having all of this stuff not on my disposal which I do now so again it, this looks like pigments to me and what's really lovely about this is I can decide how to blend stuff in so what we've got here are various other granular elements. So it's a blend of wavetable, granular, traditional sampling, all of this great stuff. So if I was to put the random swells back in here, you'll be able to hear the difference. So if I start to move, and again, you can see it's now not so cloudy over here on the left-hand side. So it's actually not just a graphical thing. It's actually showing you that the you know, part A is actually active. So if I pop back over here, you can actually hear there's a string drone going on. And if I pull the morph back, you just have this lovely drifty element.
and you can hit that I can not just it's not just a crossfade it's a true morphing of these sounds where as I say there's elements of granular synthesis and it's bringing these sounds together in incredibly novel ways so if it's so good why did I ever deactivate it well because I wanted to separate these sounds out because if we go to intro strings here you can see it's a beautiful swell but I've got the morph all the way over on the other side and if I was to open the other instance of the plugin here and have both, what you'll see is that. So I've separated them out a little bit and I can give them slightly different effects and slightly different, again, macro controls like time and motion and stuff like that as well. There's loads of really interesting things you can do with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of editing to these sounds and I'm going to do it in context. I'm going to do it in context of the actual trailer cue itself because, you know, if I'm going to be asked to do a live stream and write some trailer music, then I may as well do it properly, right? So don't be surprised if this ends up on a film sometime, hopefully, because that would be a great result. So effectively now, what I can do here, and again, I can hit enter on this you know, while I've got this plugin selected, and I can go between the main screen here, the global view, and then go to the browser which is quite a useful thing. But one of the first things I'm going to do is just do a little bit of an adjustment because I'm quite happy with that ARP where it is in terms of like the actual, you know, intro and we'll, we'll sculpt that with a bit of automation in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this intro strings here and I'm going to open up the settings. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some work on the pitch bend because what I really want it to do is I've, you may have noticed, and this is a bit of a rule. For those of you who are interested in doing trailer music, there's there's kind of a bit of a rule where you can, you know, separate the the cue, as we call it, the track, into like three sections. There's an intro, there's a bit of a pause, big build, drop, main sort of theme and section, and then maybe a fourth section where there's like a big, you know, denouement, a big like crescendo at the end. So you're talking like three or four sections of anything up to 16 bars each. Think about how long a trailer is in a Hollywood movie, for example. You know, the longer ones are over three minutes. So you're talking anywhere between two and a half, three minutes. So actually, if you look at my logic screen here, by the extreme right-hand side of the end of this arrangement view in logic, you know, around here, around, say, for example, bar 67 here, that would be where I would look to finish around that three minute mark. So it gives me a great benchmark essentially to get in, be as dramatic, be as epic, be as, you know, aggressive as possible in order to make the film scene as exciting as humanly possible and then get out. So yeah, it's quite a cool thing. Again, those of you, I mean, I'm going to try and answer as well as do the Artoria thing. I'm going to try and answer as many sort of film trailer scorey sort of questions because we may as well get two for the price of one, right? You don't see the picture beforehand. So basically, you have to you know, write the, the track and then that, you know, actually the, the trailer will be cut. It will be edited to a version of your music. And there might be a little bit of tightening to do, but that's kind of how it works. Music comes first. Video gets cut to it two come together and that's how you get those hit points and you know perfect smash points where there's a drum hit or whatever so i'm going to change the bend range here i'm going to change it to five semitones and what i'm going to do is over the course of these eight bars here on this very first track i'm gonna really go about changing the the, the pitch of this quite dramatically and I'm going to do that by adding in a bit of MIDI automation. And rather than do it on the keyboard, what I'll do is I'll actually do it nice and uh, nice and accurately using the, the pitch bend here. So I can select the pitch bend. And what I'll do is I'll put a point in. Actually, no, it's, it wants to be at zero here. And then over the course of the eight bars, and what I'm going to do is, is just back away here a little bit. I actually want it to just with, say, a couple of beats left of the eighth bar, I want that pitch bend to, like, really ramp up. So 
what we'll get is something like this. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to give it a couple of bars breathing room. In fact, I might do that over the last four bars. And I'm going to put another point in here because it's important to get the pitch bends right because otherwise it can go a bit do lally and a bit ski with. So here we go. And you should be able to hear this as we go along. And there you go. So you could go maybe to seven semitones and then change here to something like this. And we could also, if we wanted that to be like really quite thick, we could add another note in here. Because again, it is a string ensemble. So we could just drop that like that. And then we get that roll up. And you get the idea. So again, just the presets that are coming out here are absolutely fantastic. Now, moving on to the intro arp here, and we are going to get through all four. All four of the augmented collection products here are being used in the context of what we've done today. So we're going to get through them all. So we're going to keep with strings for a moment, and then we're going to you know, dig deeper into things like voices, into things like the pianos as well, and of course, also the brass. So from here on the intro arp itself, I'm just going to drop this in. What we might want to do is play with some of the macro controls. So... You can see it kind of comes in quite abrupt. So what I might want to do is, is automate a little bit of this color. And you see it comes in off the filter. It's like a low, it's like a low, a high pass, well, it's a low pass filter. And then as we get into that second four bars, we can start to add more time and more motion. So we can... A little bit of a subtle effect there. So you get that gnarliness using that motion control. And we can try effects A and effects B as well. And there's like a really nice phaser there. And of course, with all the Artoria stuff, you've got great undo and redo buttons and an undo history, which is super handy. So one of the things you might want to do is just dig a little bit deeper here and be able to just look at the various different effects. And you've got some panning going on. You've got a flanger as well, which is that, you know, that really nice kind of phasery kind of effect. And then you've got your various macros here that are appearing on screen. So again, you've got the ability to change the layer and part volumes. The color is, again, it's a filter control, of course. And then time is like synth releases. And then motion is like a vibrato, essentially. So it's quite a useful thing to do. And yeah, you're pretty easy to, to kind of go into here. We're not going to spend too much time on that tonight because we've got a lot of sounds to get through. And I want to try and show as much of a breadth of the plugin as possible. So from here, we could, you know, potentially start to play around. Again, it's this wavetable here. So we could actually play around with the sound a little bit more and then make it a bit you know, more aggressive, shall we say, a bit pluckier again. It starts right from the off with a shorter attack time. You could even start with a bit more envelope amount if you wanted to. So we'll just roll that up, essentially. And 
you know, again, we'll do it nice and quickly because, again, in trailer work, you, you know, it is all about the, the speed, shall we say. And we will use the color control here. So what we'll want to do is start like this and then roll down. A little bit of a logic automation trick for you here. If you want to get accurate automation, go to the mix menu, go to create track automation, create two automation points at region borders, boom, as the kids say, and then you can maneuver them whichever way you want. So what I'm going to do is just going to undo that. I'll go through that again now. Mix menu, create track automation, create two region automation points at region borders. So I should just select that. Boom, there we go. And then I can just adjust from there. Very, very handy. So I could take that all the way down, delete that point, and we're there, essentially. So very, very handy indeed. And then from here, we could go to the Automation Curve tool and then be able to put a little bit of a curvature on it, get it moving the way we want. And it will now sound a little bit like this at the beginning. And there you go. So again, a lot of these modulations, very, very easy to control using augmented strings. And again, to go back to my original point, I would have a separate synth running another VST. I would have contact libraries and other sample libraries all over the place and, you know, sampled strings and everything else to get what I've just done in literally like five minutes in augmented strings using you know layer splits morphing between the two and a little bit of effect some pitch bending it's just incredibly immediate and that is actually a really really great thing when you're doing trailer work because sometimes the brief comes in and you've got 24 hours or basically sometimes you've got 24 hours if you're lucky so it's it's a really really cool tool for film music composers and for you know, people who do trailer stuff like this. So we're going to move over now into the next element in Augmented, which is the piano. Now, a lot of modern trailer music, they've started to put these little, what we call pings at the beginning. They're like a, you know, like a really like kind of highly pitched piano key. That is kind of a signifier of like, we want your attention. And they sound a little bit like this. Now, not entirely like that because you'd sometimes just get the piano. However, in this case, it's got a bit more of a blend to it. And again, you've got that morph that you can see between, again, a more synthesized part that's kind of got a bit more kind of, you know, density and a bit more texture to it. And there's like a held string behind it, which blends well with the intro strings but it's got that ping to it at the beginning. And that's all we're using it for. If I was to move that over, you can hear that kind of like screechy top end string, but it will actually start to start and sound like this first. It's just like a very nominal kind of piano tone. It's a lovely grand piano, augmented grand piano, of course. But again, adding these sound design elements is absolutely amazing. So that little ping at the beginning, if we listen to it in context, a little bit lower in volume, so we could probably turn that up a little bit, actually, just to give it a bit more, more va-va-voom, if you will. There we go. And that extra layer in the intro strings and the impending pitch bend upwards and how that is also kind of cascading around the the bass arp being you know rolled in off the filter works really really nicely I've got to say. 
And, you know, it sounded a little bit empty between bars five and seven. So what we can do is, again, move on. And we're using the piano. We're going to see the piano a little bit later on. You heard that piano line again. So we'll we'll go into that and just, you know, hear that a bit more a little bit later. So the intro drone's an interesting one. And, you know, to be honest, to save time, because I've just got that much stuff to go through, I've picked up a load of presets that I've been working with during the day here. It's absolutely brilliant. So, you know, again, I'll go into the browser here and I'll go into liked and I've got a whole load of likes here. So if you are going to pick it up, feel free to, you know, take a screenshot of this and, you know, have that be your starting point for your journey into these products. Uh, so we're back on the strings and I really want to lay in this kind of like intro drone. I've got my keyboard here. So we're in F minor, by the way. And again, on the trailer side of things, you normally get tempos that look slower, but sometimes we're working in double of that. So the eagle eyed amongst you might see at the top of my screen in Logic that I've got it set to 90 beats per minute. But some of the things I'm doing are double time. So it's, I'm kind of like flicking between 90 and 180. So again, it's that half time, double time thing. You know, a bit like a drum and bass producer, basically. And you've got this lovely, again, that real hybrid feel of something very orchestral on one side. And then on the other side, it's this real waspish, almost like a super sore, kind of a trancey sound, really. If I play that further up, it's very. You know, it's very 90s trance, basically. But lower down works really nicely. And if you go into the advanced mode here, you'll see there's like natural violin harmonics. And you can see the tuning's actually two octaves up on this particular sample. So what I want to do is I actually want to drop this because we've already got a high line going in the intro. So I want to try and blend that a little bit more and that's where that's sitting really nicely and again we're going to give it the same treatment as the intro strings we're going to go to the pitch bend again and we're just going to check yeah it's seven semitones so i'm going up a perfect fifth which gives it that drama and again i could actually get away with just taking this and dropping it in which could be quite cool. And let's have a little look at the pitch bend. And yeah, that's not come over, I don't think. Let's just uh, undo that for a moment. Oh, yeah, it has. There you go. So let's have a little listen to what that does. And I want to make sure I'm going to just mute this first lower layer. A little bit high overall. One of the things I can do in Logic, which I really like, is just getting a transposer. We'll just bump that down an octave. Thank you very much. And here we go. So let's listen to the whole of the intro together. bad. I want to try it an octave down, so we'll knock it down to 24. Yeah, and it's given it a real sense of urgency, which is really, really nice. And they've got various different drones that can, you know, work really, really nicely as well. You know, you've got uh, a whole litany of different ones here. So we can go, we can try one or two of them. We can just shuffle that to one side. See, I like that new gospel preset there. And I've actually got some here in the liked 
Uh, one I did like was just the uh, Strada Various. See what he did there? Very clever. And we can just try that as just an extra little element, essentially. So, again, you can hear that's more of a, you know, a background atmosphere. A bit more of a woody, sort of reedy kind of sound. If I... So it could be something we would add in as a, you know, maybe an extra little background sort of taste, a little bit of texture, shall we say. So what we can do is we can move back to the new gospel sound because I really like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to command D, duplicate. And I'm just going to call that texture drone. Again, would be amazing if I could spell. And then from there, we will we'll just make a new MIDI pattern and we'll just try and get the right kind of sound. And again, we need to go to Stradivarius. Let's put that back on new gospel. And we just need to move over to here. That's the one. So I just get confused with my instances. So you've got a little bit of emotion control there on the macros. And what I'm probably going to do here is just add a little bit of EQ. Just roll some of the bottom end off. And then just kind of plant that quite low. And then we'll just use that F there, like that. Again, sometimes I love it when Logic just gives me eight bars of a MIDI note at the beginning. And you can just hear that blending in the background. Really nice. Amazing. Right, okay, so we've got these couple of sounds here at the bottom. One of them called The Procession, and another one which is The Voices, so no prizes for guessing what part of the Augmented Collection we're using there. This is where we get our first introduction into Augmented Brass, and this Procession sound is just wild. It actually reminds me of a very specific sound. For those of you who have seen or maybe even not seen and need to see it immediately because, frankly, it's one of the best films of the last decade and one of the best scores I've heard of the last decade is Blade Runner 2049. And the score that Benjamin Wellfish and Hans Zimmer come up with in that movie is absolutely wild. And this sound, the procession, really reminds me of certain sounds that they'd come up with for this uh, score, which is just a, a brilliant, brilliant to masterpiece. You know, personally, I think a lot of I, a lot of people are wrong on that score. You know, I actually think it's every bit as good and every bit as iconic as the original Vangelis score. Um, I also happen to think that the movie itself is better than the original, but you know, what do I know? But this procession sound has this amazing movement when the morph is over to the right. Absolutely brilliant. And again, the, the other side morph is this weird, wonky... Just brilliant. It's got this low-end depth. So it's got this hard cinematic. There's a bit of you know, rusty metal brass in there as well as a sample. Really, really nice. And then from there, it's the motion control. So again, when we look at macros, for example, when it comes to motion, it's the scale of function two. So if we go over to modulation and look at function two, it's got this kind of like, you know, again, this rate sync going on. 
uh, which is like one eight. So once you turn that full on, on the motion, it's going to give you this extra movement. This is what it sounds like with the motion off. And you'll hear it's it's kind of like a half time again. So again, it's that 9180 thing. And as I move the motion, I just love that sound. Really aggressive, really dirty, and it's got this real, you know, to it, shall we say. And again, on the effects, you've got obviously layer A and B. We're actually using mostly layer B here. So again, we can add a bit more of that in. Yeah, there's a bit of a filter there. But we could add a little more drive. Should we so choose? And for you logic heads out there, a little bit of a tip for you. I absolutely love the compressors in logic. I think they're great. I've got the threshold on zero. Just keep it in the platinum mode. Set your distortion to soft. Makes everything sound really fat. This is what it sounds like without. I'm with. Thank me later. <laughs> so this procession sound is actually forming like the rhythmic bed. And again, it's augmented brass. Now, to move on to this other sound here, we've got the augmented voices. And again, this is one of those situations where it's the opening sound of the entire plugin. And I couldn't help but just use it straight away when I heard it. I was like, that's that filling point I need it. So again, if we listen to it in isolation, it's just like a, a classic kind of gated vocal. And then you've got this. Really, really nice. So again, we can just use that for a couple of bars. And again, completely automatable to get that rhythm in. And I really wanted to just keep that in there as like a kind of a slightly lower tone. I did have it in actually kind of like, and you can kind of see if I put this transposer up here, you can see I've got it an octave down. So I actually programmed it in uh, an octave up. But I found it was a bit, a bit high and a bit, eh, whereas that's a bit too low for me. So... The octave down, great. Really, really beautiful. And that motion, shortening the the tremolos there and shortening the uh, the gate, if you will. more of a kind of a band pass sort of situation or a band reject filter there. Have a nice doubling effect on FXB. It's a really great sound overall. And again, you can play around with that. It's the opening sound of the whole plugin. Really, really nice. And then as you go through, you'll see there's real choirs, there's arpeggios, percussive keys, some nice real choir stuff. You know, we could go through this and really find some like nice pads that are voice based and, you know, be able to match it in certain sections because there are more things that we're going to add. So that's a nice little overview. We've actually, by the time we've gotten to like the main big heavy drop here, we've actually used all, you know, all four instances. So let's see how far we get in the 20 minutes that we've got left. So we'll go through the drop and then we'll actually look at this sound here, which is, you know, no prizes for guessing what this is going to do. I mean, are you even doing trailer music if you don't have a boah in there at some stage? 
My God, Inception's got a lot to live up to, a lot to answer for as well. I mean, listen to that. Total filth. So, yeah, it's a big brass sound, augmented brass, all on the left side. Certain Doom is an excellent name for this particular sound, shall we say. I mean, come on. <laughs> Let's just play with that for a second, because, you know, you could really... some of that and again please and then I, I've kind of written a progression using this because it was in my head I might keep that clean it almost sounds a bit like even if I do say so you're not just this record which I heard again recently on John Wick 4. Um, if you haven't seen that movie, you need to see it again. It's amazing. Uh, they use that classic Justice track and an amazing fight team. Uh, also reminds me of, like, uh, you know, um, oh, Simon Says, that hip-hop record. Great sound. Absolutely amazing. So let's have a little bit of a play around because that top note is dying for a little bit of crunch. This one here. Oh dear. Oh dear, what have we done? Right, so let's do a little bit of an automation pass on that. And what's really nice is I think we can do this on the keyboard, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, you get that lovely LFO on the mod wheel there. Yeah, really cool. I'll just do it with the mouse, it'll be easier. Rather than turning around and everything else. Just gonna... Uh, where are we? That one, that's right. Yeah, we want a bit of... bit of latch. So what we'll do is, is we'll uh, hit record here a little bit earlier. In fact, let's do... that back at our leisure. A bit of timing issue there. That might just be to do with how I've recorded, but there you go. Like that top note on that second turnaround now, right before the end. And there you go. So, feels right for another little break there. This is one of those streams where I feel like we're 44 minutes in. And I've literally just got started. <laughs> so as you might be able to see here, I'm having a little bit of a ball. So yeah, you've got all that great classic trailer stuff that was, you know, all that, you know, big hefty stuff, which is great. And you heard that piano come back in and you know, this new sound as well. This what we call a, what I've called a drop staccato because it really lends energy, especially after this drop. So if we hear this on its own, Really beautiful. It's called Speed Run. 
and it's got that lovely harp there. And the motion is adding notes to an harp here. Which is really nice. That colour gives a nice movement. He's in there. Nice. That's made it even more dramatic. So if we hear that from the drop. you could bring in later maybe or we can actually keep it quite straight and then add in another staccato which we've got here this is the final track that I uh, planned. Uh, there's that new gospel sound again, so I don't think we really need that. However, what I do want to do is just have a little look here. And again, like as you would expect with all the Artoria stuff, the the presets work great. The pra the browser works great. If you want to just you know explore and look for something, all I did there was write staccato in, and it just gives you all the staccato presets. Really, really nice. And as I say, I've liked a big load of them there. So we could try stuff like this Titan Fury, if I remember correctly, it's quite nice. And you've got these lovely... And again, you get things like Aftertouch as well, where you've got that vibrato on. Yeah, that's really nice. So what I might want to do on the Titan Fury all long strings there so sometimes it's not you know synth violin or you know acoustic electronic it's sometimes it's blended sorry blended violins long articulation over short where here i've got So, yeah, I mean, we can play that line and then just see where we go with it. So let's have a go. I mean, I can't guarantee I'm going to play it in well, but, you know, we'll try our best. Okay. We had to have a little bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a, a problem there with the timing, but I think that's just my DAW. I think it's just my very logic going a bit crazy. However, we will clean this up and just very quickly. No, I just want a sixteenth note there. Don't want any swing or anything like that. I can then. Hang on a moment. Thank you very much. Repeat that in. And then let's just highlight that. And 
and what we probably want to do is very very quickly just work on that lovely progression we had going there so just play the whole thing and then that will go up Go, yeah, and it'll be the D sharp, the E flat. I might just drop those down. same again and then this time we'll go higher for the final two we'll go up to the octave we'll go to, there we go, just to finish off And there you go. So, yes, excellent stuff. So, yeah, we've uh, we've had a really good time there. Well, at least I have. I don't know about you guys. But this has been like a bit of a whistle-stop tour of the augmented collection, augmented strings, augmented uh, voices, augmented grand piano, augmented brass. And as you can see, they're incredibly powerful tools for media work for film music composition for trailer work like this and not only that you know you can hear from the the granular textures and you know a lot of the other sounds that you probably heard that there is a, a beautiful you know use for them in electronic music like part of the fascination for me of working in both the film music world and in the electronic music world is that I'm trying to bring a little bit of electronic music into film scores and I'm trying to bring a little bit of film score into electronic music and you know the two actually work really really well together and I've always had this fascination of the juxtaposition the tension the contrast between the organic and the synthetic between the electronic and the acoustic between you know a synthesizer creating you know tones from nowhere or even granular synthesis alongside a real life instrument and how that can enhance the expression and your appreciation of both and how again the organic and the electronic work brilliantly together in a very nice hybrid very modern way and the augmented collection from artoria just takes that to a whole new level like i say you know this has just saved me a boatload of time you know doing a trailer queue like this i would not be anywhere near as far along and be able to have such a good time with this if it wasn't for these plugins and for what artori has done it's a sensational thing that they've done and again right now 30 percent off you buy all four in the bundle you get 50 percent off personally i'd be buying all four but you know that's just me because I'm basically, you know, I've got a problem, and the problem is, well, plugins. So there we go. So should we have a little look at the chat before we finish off? Because we've got a few things. Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, LP, they're all out, yes. And, uh, you know, very, very cool. <laughs> Big brass, indeed. One wheel challenge, very much so. Uh, uh, remember the riser by Air Music. Yes, we remember that as well. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hello to Jai again. Great to see you on here, mate. Excellent, excellent stuff. And uh, hello to Dennis. Hello, Dennis, one of our guys over at NYT. Hello to Vivian. Great. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, great to see you, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, Sushi Monster over on Twitch. Hello, we've been neglecting our Twitches. 
shall we say. Uh, Sushi Monster, hello. Amazing. Thank you very much. Great stuff. I often wonder when there's like, you know, more just kind of, you know, comments than questions and wonder whether or not I've just bored you all to death or you're all stunned with what you've heard. <laughs> but it's all good fun. It's all good fun. And again, I just absolutely adore coming onto ADSR and showing you guys what I'm up to. Again, I've maybe like, you know, serviced several things at once here because I'm like, oh, yeah, I could finish this off. And this could actually be like a, you know, it could be something I could, uh, you know, get in front of some music supervisors. But, you know, why not? If we're going to show you how these things work, we may as well show you on a live project that is like juicy and real and has potential. You know, that's what I've always tried to aspire to in my educational career. It's like, why bother, you know, making some, you know, half measured version of what I would normally do. I'd rather show you the real stuff. And so it is here. So yeah, wonderful stuff, guys. Really, really wonderful stuff. This has honestly been one of my favorite streams so far. Because, you know, to be honest, like in the terms of my career, I'm kind of moving more in this direction. Uh, getting a little bit old for the old DJ and you now, you know what I mean? 43 years of age, he says. And, uh, you know, basically just want to sit in my nice comfy chair. And when I'm not making film music and doing streams like this and helping people, you know, basically I just want to be on Gran Turismo because, you know, I'm a sim racing geek as well. Shout out to all the PS5 crew. <laughs> so, yeah, excellent stuff. Keep it locked to ADSR. Again, finally, ADSR have Artoria augmented collection at 30% off for individual products in the, in the bundle at the moment. But if you buy the whole bundle of all four, 50% off. Incredible deal. Really would recommend it. And I would also recommend subscribing to the ADSR YouTube channel because we do streams like this on a very regular basis. Uh, th th despite probably their best judgments, they keep asking me back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's a wonderful thing to do. And yeah, you can check me out over on Instagram at Paul Nolan Sound. Yeah, we've got our own community, MYT, uh, which we're doing amazing things with. We've got, you know, hundreds of amazingly talented producers, composers, DJs, etc. And, uh, you know, we're in the process of launching a record label. So keep it locked on that as well. Keep it locked also to ADSR because we may well have more for you in the coming days. Whisper it quietly. Secret, secret, secret. Ooh, you know, could, you know, build a little bit of tension here like a film trailer. So, yeah, amazing stuff. Thank you very much to ADSR saying always love having you, Paul. Thank you very much. You know, you know, between you guys and me mother, I'm not sure who my biggest fan is at the moment. <laughs> so, anyway, great stuff. Wonderful, wonderful. Keep it locked away to, uh, as I say, to ADSR. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to hitting you all up in the chat afterwards. But that's it for now. Much love. Take it easy. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>